And then when we get into the live shows, there's there's more of an atmosphere of wanting to gear towards a theatrical form performance or a statement. Something that's, uh, you know, each time we'll take a different kind of stance, you know, but it's, it's usually a, a fairly theatrical one. me a, a, a you know a mode of escape in, in, in a lot of ways and uh, and a lot of issues have to deal with the fact of how real is real because uh, um, reality is something that has to be dealt with sometimes and a lot of people live too real and I think they need to be live, live a little more unreal and so it comes out in, in the music and gives them a chance to escape into that unreal world so maybe that's the theme Right now, Skinny Puppy are in this Vancouver studio working on their fourth album. It's an unusual process that they compare to abstract painting. Kevin Key and Dwayne Gattel lay down broad strokes of sound before their reclusive frontman, Nivik Ogre, comes in to apply his tortured, garbled vocals, which deal with everything from animal rights to AIDS. Make some really disgusting sounds with your mouth, like this. Ready, Dwayne? Yeah. Oh, wait. You go. <laughs> and then, when, when, after you've done that, you guys can stand So we're a little nuts. Nice. You gotta put up with this. Huh? Echo and Jekyll. Skinny Puppy Sound was born five years ago when Key and Ogre, bored and flirting with what they called self-destructive behavior, started experimenting for their own amusement. Incredibly, their warped fascination with horror movies, combined with a ghoulish sense of humor, led to an original sort of music that struck a nerve all over the world. It's definitely for more adventurous people, and, and quite often gears completely away from people that, that, that assume a normal ro robotic kind of position. And uh, it, it gears towards people that, that need that, that, that type of thing, you know. And uh, there's a lot of people out there. I mean, we're meeting people worldwide that are fanatical. And, and, you know, we support those people because they're the same kind of people that we are. We got a fan letter from the Persian Gulf once, a guy on, on a ship. He said Skinny Puppy allowed him to escape from uh, his, uh, his, his confinement, I guess, on board. That's exciting. I mean, you know, it's, uh, I think it's doing, it's doing what I'd like it to do, and that's to offer somebody out there a change from, from daily routine kind of music, you know? It's, it's like the salt or the pepper, or, or for our case, the, the, uh, you know, the hot sauce. <laughs> Puppy's been most successful in Europe and America, where, believe it or not, they hit top ten on Rolling Stone's dance charts. Their low-budget, highly disturbing videos are hot stuff in big city dance clubs, although most music television programmers have banned them. And Tipper Gore's conservative watchdog group, Parents Music Resource Center, has gone after them, suspecting subliminal messages in Skinny Puppy's music. Could it be Satan worship? We love sending out secret messages. None of them are satanic. Though. We send out lots of backwards, you know, flip it around and spin it backwards, and you know, I mean, that's that's all part of the fun, really. But uh, nothing cares towards um, any serious kind of uh, mass. You know, we don't we don't go to mass in the middle of Stanley Park and bend down and <laughs> or anything. You know, I mean, it's 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 all in the a day's escapism. As far as the videos, um, they they were banned because of suspicion of content. The 
fact that Skinny Puppy are on the censorship hit list isn't really surprising. Skinny Puppy's mind-numbing music could easily be perceived as the result of some kind of strung-out heroin scene. Kevin Key says it's just the opposite. That's just a, one of those National Enquirer kind of things. Because uh, I've, I've never personally, uh, I know that other people in the band have never done, uh, never done heroin. I think that's a bad scene. I wouldn't want to get involved in it. I think, I think Skinny Puppy, if anything, is a replacement for that. Skinny Puppy have already made one film. This hellish concert production called Ain't It Dead Yet. Hard to believe, but the future could get even more bizarre. They're talking about expanding their horizons, evolving Skinny Puppy into a kind of post-apocalyptic multimedia circus. Don't say you weren't warned. We've always wanted to do our own horror movie. With Ogre as the, as the, the lead mute, and each of us playing our own little mute parts and, and doing a really surreal kind of a weird, weird play or something like that. I think that'd be fun. I mean, we, we've, we've done step one of what we've really set out to accomplish. We're really going to, you know, try and expand it into, into a lot of different areas. And hopefully we'll be su as successful as this.